weeks ago, I got this message from Ian Smith. And it says, Hi Dawn, on tips for detectors, could you explain the difference between the standard coils that come with various machines and the more specialist coils that can be bought as a separate item? Things like, does a special coil improve a more basic detector? Are they compatible with different makes? Sure, lots of people would like to improve a more basic detector without the expense of a complete new machine, but they don't want to purchase a different coil without a clue as whether it'll make any difference to their finds. And that is a fantastic question. So let's go for it. Now, coil sizes do come in a multitude of sizes. The one that you get with your machine is usually called the stock coil, but you can get coils that are huge, like that, which is called a Billy Big Coil, or you can go the opposite direction and just get a little coil. What should we call that? Little Timmy. I don't know. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you now what the difference between all these coils are and why you should think carefully about what coil you're using, depending on where you're going digging. Now, there is no answer to it. I think, I think some people just like me to say, big is best you know the bigger the better but that's not always the case each one has a pro and a con so we're going to look at the benefits of a small coil and the benefits of a large coil and then we're going to look at what they're not quite so good at now i've got to say here i'm just going to talk about garrett coils but all coils are the same and each each brand make their own set of coils now coils come in a large range of sizes and it's not just so that my coil's a bit better than your coil because it's bigger but each coil has a specific job. So I'm going to start off, first of all, by talking about big coils because um, everybody seems to think that a big coil is best. A lot of people with big coils, and you can get some that are like monster size. So why, why do people put a big coil on? If you're on a permission or you're hunting somewhere that's quite large, like a massive field, it's got low amounts of trash in it, it's also quite unmineralized then a big coil is going to be able to cover more ground and it's also going to get an increased depth which is good for picking up larger targets that are, are, are deeper. So if you're looking for hordes of things or you're looking for deep Bronze Age accents, you're more likely to find it with a big coil. Now the downside or the cons of a big coil, things that you need to keep in mind really. So although they go deeper, for larger targets that are deeper. They also have quite a lack of sensitivity to smaller targets because they're looking for bigger things that are low down. Especially if they're quite shallow. That's where you're gonna lose stuff on with a big coil. They're extremely hard to pinpoint with. You're not gonna get the same accuracy as you will with a small one. You might have to turn your sensitivity down because they're going to have increased sensitivity to uh, the electrical magnetic fields, which are going to make it all chattery. There is a significant weight increase. And, you know, I used a Nell coil, a large one, Nell Tornado, for a long time. And uh, it had this effect on me. Now, that's not actually a joke. I did, I did I had one big arm and one, one uh, arm that was a bit like a sausage and one that was like Arnold Schwarzenegger. And then the other thing is, they're not good on stubble fields or small areas. So if you were trying to dig around tree roots or you were trying to get in cellar holes like they do in America or, the, you know, anywhere that's, that's quite hard to get into, a big coil, would, you would really struggle with it. So let's move on to small coils and why you should have a small coil. Small coils are really beneficial if you're in a highly mineralized place. For example, when I went to the Thames and I detected on the Thames, um, I used a very small coil because it was full of iron nails. So it was my best chance of finding anything using a small coil. So they're brilliant for trashy areas. They've got a great target separation, meaning it will, it's, it will pick up objects close to each other. Brilliant for hard to reach places, tree roots, um, cellar holes, just odd places. And they're very, very easy to pinpoint with. They're like really easy to pinpoint with. So let's have a look at the cons of a small coil. Because it is small, you're not going to get as much ground coverage. So you're only going to be the better for doing small areas. And like we're saying, under tree roots or in little fiddly places, they're great for getting in. The other downside of it is that it's, it's got a shallow operational depth, meaning you're not going to get the depth with a small coil. 
as you do with a, a big coil but you are going to be able to pick up little smaller objects so yes so the cons are you haven't got as much ground coverage and it's not as deep so you see it's very much based upon where you're digging what type of place you're digging and what you're hoping to find so if you're hoping to find if you're on a stubble field and you're hoping to find small silvers and things that are likely to be on the top yes you'd be better off with a smaller coil than a bigger coil but if you're on a massive large field and you're out there there wasn't a lot of trash on it you were looking for deep targets then you need a big coil so that's there's no answer to which is best it depends on what you want to actually achieve that day metal detecting now usually the stock coil that comes with a detector is in between the big and the small and that's designed to be the best of both worlds really it's going to pick up the smaller targets and it is going to have some depth but it's not going to have as much depth as the big coil and it's not going to be as good at small targets as the small target coil if it makes sense <laughs> Diggy, you think I should tell them about a baggy wire? Yeah, I'll do that now then. Now, if you are changing a coil or you are setting up a coil on your detector for the very first time, this is something that you should watch out for. Now, you might think, you know, that's silly, but I actually spoke to somebody at the weekend on a dig who asked me how to ground balance his machine and I looked at the coil and it looked like that. So that's going to cause... If you've got your wire all baggy like that, what's going to happen is as you're swinging it and moving it, the wire is going to cause a, a problem around your coil and you're going to be getting all false signals. So this is how it should look. You can see there, it's nice and tight, wrapped round, um, all the way to the bottom, and that's not going to flat, so that's going to be nice and safe. So, yeah, first of all, make sure that you've got your wire nice, nice and tight round the stem. We like it nice and tight round the stem, don't we? <laughs> Now another mistake beginners often do when changing a coil is by not actually setting it up correctly with the machine and then they take it out and they think the coil's broke. So this is what you need to do. You do it on Garrett's. I'm assuming you do it on other brands, although I'm not too sure. You'd have to check your manual on that. But this is how you would um, fit a coil to a Garrett machine and that's from a 150 up to an AT Max. First of all, get the on button, which is that one at the top, and hold it down for five seconds till you hear a double beep there you go that now has been that's a factory reset and what that has done that is set your coil to your machine so that they will both work in tandem together so another question that ian asked was are your coils interchangeable meaning can you swap from one machine to another well the answer to that is not really now if you've got an ace range which is 150 200 300i up to the 400i those you can swap around but you couldn't put a 400i coil on an apex or an at max or an at pro um, the same as you couldn't put an apex coil on the ace range so the answer is not really if you want to buy a new coil for your at max you need to buy an at max coil because they, they're usually programmed and set for the actual machine that they're going on so the answer to can you swap them around is not not really no i mean if you want to buy an l1 or something that's not like a branded one you would still have to say i want to buy an l tornado for a 400i or for an at max or an at pro so yeah so you can't really swap them around no find of the week so this is from my facebook group and the the winner of this week is my friend nicola white who you might know uh, does mudlarking but did you know she also goes metal detecting and she's got an xp aux and she's um not as experienced at it but she's she just loves finding stuff and she did whatever all of us wish we could do is just to pop in the garden and find something lovely and she found the beautiful military cat badge now i absolutely love cat badges and military stuff not because they're just nice but you know somebody would have been polishing that and been proud you don't know where it's traveled to and where it's been um just anything of a, a military badge i mean i found half of one the other day and was over the moon with it and strangely a guy that was on the dig 
found the other half so between us we've got a full cat batch <laughs> but well done nicola i don't think you want a sticker but if you do <laughs> i know where you live i'll send you one now last week i forgot to do this so i'm sorry but here is my top commenters from midigard on facebook group and it is at number one malcolm leatherland scott bell amanda aldridge robert mcfarland stephen baker liam bath dave bazin ted pyman tim may and tim oliver so you're my top commenters this week so well done thank you very much so that's it for this week i hope you found the bit of, about coils a bit interesting you know the answer to it is can you buy a bigger coil for your 400 eye and make it go a bit deeper yes of course you can but you also might be digging up some deep pipes well if you enjoy these videos i'd appreciate it if you give it a share or let somebody else know that might be interested in watching them It'd be very much appreciated and i'm going to finish off with a little jokey news flash that i made a while back uh, but i still think it's funny and you might not have seen it so see you next week facebook users were shocked when they saw a comment on a facebook group where a user had asked what's the best flavor cheese and onion or beef flavored crisps and nobody had answered get a simplex in another facebook group a lady from blackburn called margaret was viciously attacked after trying to make people laugh with a meme that's just not funny margaret from blackburn was very shocked she said she even had private PM messages where people have been abusive, they threatened to come round, break her windows and shove the boots down her throat. And finally, Barbara from Wolverhampton had to receive psychiatric treatment after going in a group and asking, what's the best detector? Barbara was very confused. She said she only thought about a Garrett 250, but after all the messages she'd received, she had to go outside, buy cheese, then she went upstairs and started singing My Old Man's a Dustman out of the bathroom window.